Jet Racing 365, the only podcast about jet racing. We will have the greatest jet racing discussions, interviews, and news. This is Jet Racing 365 with Tyler Hayes Jackson and Taylor Larson. Jet Racing 365. Jet Racing 365. Yep, here we are. Hi everybody, this is Jet Racing 365 with Tyler Jackson and Taylor Larson. Tonight on the phone we have Kurt Iredam of Iredam Racing, I think it is. Pretty sure. How you doing, Kurt? Pretty good, how you guys doing? We are doing fantastic. So, first off, we're going to start off a little bit. Uh, tell us about your history and how you got started in it all. Well, let's see, uh, we got, our family got started with uh, the jet cars back in uh, 1975. Uh, just about the time they lifted the band, my dad started teaming up with uh, Bill Mateo. And uh, Bill, at that time, was driving a, a J-34 called the uh, Chicago Fire. And Billy decided that he was going to build a new car. And my dad took over the Chicago Fire, but put a little spin on it. And we turned it into the world's fastest fire truck at the time, and it was called the Emergency One. So Billy would uh, run his Chicago Fire, and my dad would run the Emergency One. Oh, okay. Neat. Uh, so from then, from then we were uh, we ran that car for most of the late seventies and into the early eighties, and then we bought Billy's other car, the Chicago Fire. We sold the Emergency One, and uh, we started running that car, and that became the first Invader. And we toured all around the country with that. Uh, we we'd run with uh, Wes Shockley and Doug Rose and. Um, Wayne Canoose with Larry Keisha driving, you know, we, we do all that stuff, we race everywhere from Nova Scotia down to Orange County, uh, Edmonton, Canada, down to Key West, Florida, you know, Hollywood, Florida down there, we'd run all over. Oh, okay. So, when, so, when was your, when did you get licensed and when did you get started into it all? Well, um, I started out kind of like uh, you guys did, I started out polishing the wheels on the car back in 75. Um, growing up around it, I started working on it, and by the time that I was uh, about 14, I was the the official crew chief for the Invader, and I used to tour, you know, during the summer and a lot of time with him, mm-hmm. doing everything except driving the crew vehicle. So me and my dad would be out on the road doing that stuff, and we uh, we, we did uh, the cars, ran those cars till the mid 80s, and my dad decided to give it a rest for a few years, and then we started. Uh, about three years later, back in about, I was want to say, 89, 90, we started running a car for uh, Fred Fizio. It was called the Fireworks USA Jet Funny Car, the J34 powered Corvette. And uh, we ran that car, and I started getting my license at that point back in 89. But I uh, didn't really feel comfortable in the funny car, especially the 34, the 34 cars. It was just so claustrophobic. Yeah. So I, I ended up stepping out of it and not driving up until, oh, I want to say, got this our current invader car so probably about 2000 i started oh okay so uh, this is my 13th year driving wow so. so how many cars do you got in the uh team now right now we've got three and a half cars uh we've got the invader we've got the avenger we've got the strike eagle which is owned by uh, mike sister racing um we run it for him and then we have a, a Ford car that's about three quarters of the way being done in the construction of it right now. And we've been actually about three quarters of the way done with it for about two years now. We just haven't really had the time to push it, put it together. So yeah. one of these days I'm going to finish it. Yeah. All right. So uh, are you racing anywhere this weekend? No, not this weekend. Uh, unfortunately, I, I'm, I'm at home this weekend. I, I'm a full-time uh member of the Air National Guard here in Arizona, so this is my, my drill weekend, so I'm doing my my civic duty and my duties of my country here by uh, doing my drills this weekend, but next weekend I'm racing in Epping, New Hampshire at the uh, Night Under Fire uh, for out there, and we're, we'll have a, uh, I believe Al Hanna's there with his two cars, well actually it'll be Ken Hall driving the uh, Top Secret and Rich Hanna driving the uh, First Strike, the Gojo car. Uh, uh, Mike DeWitt will be there, and so will uh, Sam Ives with the Tulsa 
teams. And then for dragsters, there'll be Craig with the Avenger, myself and the Invader, David Doffett with uh, the California Smokey, and uh, Robert Albertson out of the Northeast out there with his Blazing Angel. So there'll be eight funny cars, or eight cars, four funny cars, four dragsters. Nice. Sounds like a fun event to be at. Yeah, it's going to be great. You know, first time we've been back that far east in a long time. We've toured the east coast this year. So it's the first time we've been out back east in about 17 years. So it's been really nice. Met a lot of great fans out there. Uh, last weekend we were in Paducah, Kentucky, racing at uh, Beacon Dragway. Uh, it was a great time there. They had a, a Scott Palmer and Keith Merck were there with their fuel cars. And nice little eight mile track. So. It's been a, a fun year so far. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. I'm sure you've gotten to see a lot of places. <laughs> yeah, we've been all over. We raced uh, earlier in the year. We raced at Z-Max with the four wide. So we had the four cars going on the track with Craig, myself, and then Elaine Larson and uh, Marisha Falk with the uh, Miller Jet Dragster and the Henry Riddle Jet Dragster. Oh, okay. So it was really nice to go back out there and race with some good friends. On second here. So, when when did uh, Craig get started and do it all? Well, Craig started out obviously a little bit later than I did. He, there's about nine years difference between me and Craig. But uh, he uh, he started driving, I believe, about four years ago. He started driving. Before that, um, he crewed a long time. Had to work his way up. That's that's one of the things that we've always done with. Uh, our racing. My dad was a very firm believer and you had to learn the car before you just strapped yourself in and flying on the track and use missiles. Yeah. So, you know, Craig, uh, Craig spent a lot of time learning about the engines, how to put them together, you know, a lot about the cars, how they come together. He helped me uh, uh, a lot when we completely re- rebuilt the uh, Sizzler and the Avenger. Mm-hmm. Uh, at the time, the Avenger was called the Strike Eagle, um, but we completely took those cars, which were Larson Motorsports cars, <laughs> and completely did a complete uh, off chassis uh, inspection and rebuild, complete down. Everything was completely taken down. So the entire chassis was magnaflex, checked for back. And then we went and powder coated them, and then just started from step, step one, new bearings, new bushings, you know, going through everything to make sure it was just right before we started to freeze them. Awesome. So he's doing that way. Um, and it's, it's, it's helped him a lot because he's got to learn everything of how it went together. So it made him a much better driver. So now he can explain when you got a little feeling here or there, he, he knows what it, it takes to do it. Um, and one of the things I know that like, you guys know, you know, it takes 12 license, uh, twelve runs to get your license. Well, that's NHRA's rule. And my dad's rule was we had to go through many, many runs before you even consider letting us go for our, our NHRA license or IHRA license. I myself had over 40 runs in the car. Holy cow. Everything everything from engine only to almost almost 15 full burner passes before wow. I was even allowed to consider getting my NHRA license. Wow. So I went, yeah, I went and same thing with Craig. We had to do about the same thing. Craig went a little bit faster because, you know, I was a guinea pig. He was more, you know, yeah. <laughs> more concerned with the kids getting in it before anything yeah. else. So we did a, you know, the NHRA, you, you, nowadays you get your permit. Basically, you, you pay for it. You get a six-month permit to basically license and test. Oh, okay. Uh, so it, it, it helps. It's a very important thing to do when you're getting licensed in these cars because they're not, they're not like any other car. Yeah. Uh, guys get in these cars, you know, a piston car, uh, they're very, you know, they're always demanding. Don't, don't get me wrong. All the different forms of racing are, are challenging. Um, but for us, it's not so much going on the track that's a challenge. It's stopping shut these things off. We don't have the the engine to create the, the back pressure on the transmissions and just slowly motor these things down. Even though we shut these cars off, they're still putting out thrust. They still want to move. They still want to they still want to go. So for us the the jet the hardest thing is learning how to stop. Yeah. And learning the the feel that if there's something wrong, you shut it off. There is no saving these things. No. You know, we're not we're not John Force. We're not in competition. Sure, our egos make us compete a little bit, but the big thing is we're about to show. So mm-hmm. if there's something wrong or something doesn't feel right, you need to shut that car off before you hurt yourself or somebody else. Yeah. Those are the kind of things that you learn, and, and you know, after 
seat time, because that's the, the big thing with the Jets. You know, seat time is, is the godsend. You, you learn how to, to react with, mm-hmm. uh, with the, how the, the second thought, whether to shut down or, or what you need to do, a little move. So it works out pretty well. Yeah. How, uh, how difficult was it, or for future drivers, how difficult is it to learn not to hit the brakes? Well, it really, it really depends. Um, you know, it, it's something that you have to learn. And, again, it's just it's seat time. It's all about seat time. A lot of, there's so many different cars out there with so many different setups, and that's the one thing about jet cars is I can you can get into um, my car or you can get into uh, Chuck's car or you can get into uh, Tony's car, and every car is a little different. Mm-hmm. Um, there's so many different variants. Uh, you know, I, I, my car is kind of old school. You like the, the, the independent front and rear brakes. There's yeah. some of my cars out there nowadays that have single pedal brakes. So, you know, for us, it's a little bit easier, you know, when, when slowing down, if I have to, if I use a little bit of brake, I can use rears and not fronts versus some of the cars that are single pedals, you know, they, you, they hit the, the brake and it goes all the way around. Yeah. But again, you learn not to do, you know, my cars, I put, I put pegs on. So once I launch, my feet are never on the brake. Oh, okay. I can't accidentally stab the brake. But, you know, I'm, I'm putting pressure on those pegs off to the side. And I have to consciously take my feet off those pegs to get them over on the brake. And for us, you know, you get used to you, you get the gun just speed. You know, I, I can turn around and like here at Firebird here in Phoenix when it was open, um, I could turn around and hit the chutes, and I knew how fast I could feel how fast I was going. And when I was going around the corner, I could take the corner pretty quick. But then I'd also be able to know that when I scrub down the speed with the chutes, get down on about 80, 90 mile an hour, I could start feathering the rear brakes. And I, I could just go for forever, and it was no problem. Mm-hmm. But, you know, there's there's a lot of people that have had made mistakes, though, by stabbing the brakes. I mean, a perfect example of it is, uh, um, in my opinion, again, because, you know, liability state can't say for sure. Yeah. But uh, was that uh, Richard Hammond over in England, he drove the, uh, the Hellfire oh, uh, yeah. car. And if you ever watch the video of it, you can see, you can see numerous, numerous mistakes that he made because he, he didn't know. You know, mm-hmm. it was one of these things he's driven so many different kinds of cars yeah. and he went with a gut reaction mm-hmm. when you saw the video of the front tire coming on the heart first thing he did was take his hand off the throttle and try to correct it with the steering wheel yeah. mistake number one that mistake he should have just pulled he should have pulled his car to shut off and then went and reached over again he didn't know but that's seat time you know that's a lot of seat time yeah. and then he stabbed the brakes and that, you know, then he's off for a ride yep. yeah yeah so, yeah, that's, uh, there's been a lot of bad crashes with those brakes. Um, well, like you said, yeah. like you said, though, I mean, no real way of telling, but from what we can tell, every, most of the time is that's what it's from. Sometimes. Well, it's like, uh, you can have tons of speed time and still make a mistake. I mean, oh, uh, yeah. look, at, look at Peter. Yeah. I mean, he's been, he's driven jet cars for a number of years. Yeah. Um, and he had a mistake, but again, that was a little bit, from what I understand, correct me if I'm wrong, you know, he didn't have very many runs in that particular car. No, he... So, had, and again, every little car is a little different. So, yep. placement of pedals and placement of levers and in a, an emergency situation, you know, mm-hmm. you, you gotta, you know, hopefully you can react to where everything's the same and, and you can go into it. But otherwise, bad things can happen. Yeah. You know, and again, it's like the new rule that NHRA has with this uh, automatic shutoff slash dead man switch. You know, I, I, it, I don't agree with it. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I don't think it's going to help anybody. No. You know, I've already talked to people this year that have had issues where, you know, shoots have failed, but they it failed after they deployed, so this automatic system won't work yeah. in that kind of scenario. Yeah, and they still have problems, you know. So it, it gets back to the point, though, of, of Racing is an inherently dangerous sport. Mm-hmm. It's something that we have to, you know, if you are a participant, you have to acknowledge that, you know, there's a there's a, a danger to it. And for most of us, that's that's what draws us to it. You know, you want to risk our life a little bit, get away from the mundane, everyday, you know, 9 to 5, you know, tuck the kids in bed at night, mm-hmm. you know, go to the movies on Saturday. We want a little bit of thrill. And that's, you know, that's what we do. 
yeah. we want to go, you know, 300 mile an hour with our hair on fire. <laughs> well, not so much our hair, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd like, you'd like the tailpipe section. That that sounds better. Yeah, you know, it's always nice to have a nice, nice, nice good burner. Yeah. But, so, uh... You know, so we, so we, we've, had a good, we've had a good year, and, you know, jet racing is, you know, it, we're at, at a good point of, of its history again. I mean, we, we go through cycles. I mean, back in the early 70s, when, we, when it was uh, just, the band was released, I mean, it was the best time ever. I remember growing up, we'd, uh, we'd be on tour with uh, Les and, and Doug and, and Wayne Canoes, and, we're you know, we'd be Friday night at Spokane, Saturday night Calgary, Sunday night Edmonton, and then the following Wednesday in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Mm-hmm. And just, we'd follow, it'd be like a, it'd be like the gypsy carnival. I mean, we just, we worked together, we played together. Yeah. And we had time, to, everybody helped each other out. You know, and that got for a while that, you know, we got a lot of people in it and, you know, decided that they wanted to go racing mm-hmm. a little bit. And everybody kind of brought the racing mentality back into it. And, you know, everybody wanted to go super fast and people started not being so friendly anymore. It was really sad. That's, you know, mm-hmm. that's why when we got, came back into it, you know, back in the early 90s again, we were like, you know, and we've been out for a little bit, a couple of years. You train some people, help some other teams out, but we wanted to just get back and have some fun, and that's what we, we what we did. Yeah, we based our whole marketing strategy and everything that we've done is we go out and, and have fun and help everybody out. Whether it, you know, you know, Al Ariaga, which is a great guy, and Scott, you know, Scott's a heck of a driver, probably one of the best ones out here on the West Coast. You know, helped out Jet Field for a while, help you know, get his car going a little bit. Um, you know, just pretty much help everybody and anybody. I mean, I worked on cars all across the world. I worked on cars down in Mexico. I worked on cars in Germany, France. You know, I've helped guys down in Australia, uh, you know, just like, you know, your, your grandfather did. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, it's all over. I mean, I, I get called quite, quite regularly from people trying to get help and stuff. And that's what I enjoy doing, you know. It's, actually, I almost enjoy that more than driving. But, you know, it, it's fun. Yeah. So, what uh, with the jet car archive that you've got, what got you started in doing that? Well, one of the things that I did when, you know, when I was a crew, crew guy back when I was really young, and 14, 15, 16, well, since I couldn't drive the car, or I couldn't drive the truck either, I always ended up staying on the line if I could. Yeah. And I started taking pictures. Mm-hmm. And uh, a, a, a photographer, a friend of ours, back in the day, he's still taking photos uh, Tim Marshall, great guy. I mean, he, he took took me under his wing and, and showed me what desktops I should do and, you know, what kind of exposures and film and lighting and, you know, comp, film composition. And I did that for a number of years, you know, just was taking our own photos for stuff and, mm-hmm. you know, growing up around it. You know, I mean, this is this is my history, you know, so the, it's my archive is really of his, of my memories as, as much as I can. And, a great person that I, I, I was very fortunate to, to know and pretty much call family was Jim D. Uh, D. Safety. I mean, he, we used to do all this parachute testing and stuff and growing up, and I'd rummage through his office, and he had pictures of everything, you know, all different kinds of jet cars and rocket cars and funny cars and dragsters, and he knew everybody, and you could pretty much find a photo of anything in the menagerie of his office. It was a giant pit of just history and I stacks of papers that you could find anything and everything about racing in there. It was just like a museum. And uh, so it really got me interested. And I tried a number of years ago, I think I think in about 2000, I tried and I sent out emails to, and letters to all the jet racers that I knew and I had addresses for. I tried to get them to, to give me their stories, you know, unedited. I was going to put a, put a little book together. And, of course, typical, you know, racers, we don't like to anything to anybody so I didn't get much feedback so mm-hmm. I just at one point I just started putting on a uh, for my own purposes I just threw up that Jet Archive website and started you know putting together the stuff that I knew and the stories that I knew and photos that I had found over the years and you know it's grown a little bit and it, it goes in spurts you know I'm, I'm working on the one for uh, Chuck and, and, and such so it's, it's always a nice thing to you know give back a little bit and there's so many, much more. A great website is uh, um, 
Bobby Chaitra of uh, American Jet Car, I believe, in his website. And he's got some great stuff from the early 60s. And, you know, his dad was, he ran with uh, our sponsors and those guys and had all those kind of stories. And, that, I mean, that's that's really our, our our stories that need to get out there before before they all pass and everybody, then there's no more history of it. I mean, Top Fuel's great and, and Funny Car and everybody loves it. So you got a little bit of a history there that everybody talks about it. But there's not too many people that will talk about the jet car history, you know. And it's, it's kind of sad because it's you know it's part of you know my history, which I love. You know, just growing up, being able to remember, you know, remember stuff. You know, I, I talked to uh, be able to talk to Doug Rose and say, hey, remember when we did this? Or when I talked to Bill Mateo and say, hey, remember when we were in uh, Massachusetts and we did this? And all the fun stories. You know, those are the things that, you know, growing up as a kid, you know, those are those basically your family stories. And it's nice to have it out there. So I, I do that and try to get those things out there and, and remind people of, of that, you know, what it means to be a jet car, you know. Yeah. We're, we're about entertaining. So. Yeah. And again, plus we did that. And, you know, my dad did rocket cars for a while with Sammy. So I, I have, a, I have a, a love for pretty much any thrust color vehicle. Mm-hmm. So. But it's, okay. been a, it's been a fun ride, you know. Yeah. Well, what I, um, uh, didn't your father uh kind of start out in top fuel or? Uh, well, he's, yeah, he started out back in the early fifties. Well, he started out when he first on his sixteenth birthday and. Wow. Car over the US 30 Dragway in, in Gary, Indiana, on his birthday, won his first trophy. And he ran, you know, some of those was basically like super stock kind of cars back then. And then he got involved with uh, a couple guys out of the South Side Chicago where he, where he was from and uh, drove a top field car for a couple different guys. And then he moved to Southern California and ran a, a junior fuel out there for a while. So he ran uh, basically junior fuel and top field. Up until probably the early 70s, 72, 73. And uh, he had a pretty pretty good size accident. He got out for a while and divorced my mom and, and everything went from there. And remarried and decided that he wanted to get back into it. And he decided he didn't want to spend all the money that he was spending. So he decided to go for an account rail dragster, which is similar in class nowadays to a super comp car. You know, back then it was supposed to be, you know, a, a 780 car and just you know, go out and have fun. That's what that's put a ton of money in it. But, of course, like every typical racer, he had to put a ton of money in it because he wanted to go fast, even though he was in a, an index class. So about 70, he did that for about two years, about 74, late 74, early 75. Uh, Bill Mateo, that used to be one of the screw chiefs, or screw guys on a, a fuel car, was running the jet cars. Approached my dad and said, you know, that's how we started. And he approached my dad and said, hey, why don't we, uh, why don't you start driving one of these jet cars? And my dad said, you know, you guys are, look at that. What are you talking about? Well, you guys are just a show. Yeah. And Billy goes, yeah, that's great. You know, you, you're spending, you're taking money out of your your second mortgage trying to, to run this seven second you know, car rail class, or nine second or whatever it was time. And he goes, I'm running this car on a, every weekend. And, I'm putting money in the bank. Here, look at this. And my dad's like, wow, really? So that's how he got, you know, for him it was more of a, I can go out and have fun and, and maybe not break the bank doing it. And he had a great time with the car. I mean, his first, the first year, they had over 45 dates across the country. But back then, there was only about 20, 20 licensed cars running across the country at the time, not like the 60-some odd there is today. But... At the time, uh, when he got licensed back in 75, um, his they would give you your license uh, numerically, and he was, his number was J33, so he was the 33rd guy to get his license after the band was listed. So. Wow. Well, Kurt, I think we've covered it all. Uh, you got anything to add for us? No, you guys are you know, doing a good job on, uh, on trying to get the jet information out there. It's nice to see uh, another generation of people interested in it. Um, you know, I, just 
have fun with it and have fun doing what you're doing. You got a great bunch of guys up there. Of course, Chuck, you know, he's a he's a great guy and he's had a lot of good drivers up there, Kurt White and uh, Leland and and then of course you've got um, uh, Bill, great guy, great guy. And you got Darren Bay and those guys up there, Richard Smith up in the northwest. And of course you got Johnny driving for Darren, you know, again, can't say enough about Johnny. He's he's a he's a great driver, puts on a great show. Um, Mark Stevens and and, and uh, Tony and little Tony, you know, those guys. You know, we haven't seen them too much this year since we were back east. But great bunch of guys to run with, and uh, we'll have fun sticking with those guys. Awesome. Well, we uh, really appreciate you coming on at last minute. Uh, um, so thanks. Really appreciate it. No, no problem. Anytime, guys. Thanks, Kurt. All right. Take care. Yeah, you too. It was a great interview, and uh, we thank um, Kurt Iredan for that. Uh, long, or not long. <laughs> that sounded mean. Um, we thank you uh, if you're listening to this. Uh, for all of uh, we all look forward to seeing everyone listening to the Yeah. Um, if you guys have any questions for any driver, any driver in particular, whether it's Kurt Iron and Chuck Haynes, Peter DeWitt will have him on the show sometime. Uh, you know, Kurt White, hopefully we'll get him on the show. Uh, if you have any questions for any driver, Bill Decker, Eddie Smith, or... <laughs> Eddie Smith is not driving. Mark Stevens, Tony Francis, Darren Dawson, or... David Dawson, Darren Dawson, you got it, Ariel. You name it, you got it. Alright, you got it. 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 You Go okay. Now it doesn't matter on Pete's team because we will make them Pete's team or whatever, but you guys think it's a name, and uh, we will figure out who sounds best, and we'll go from there, so... Come up with a name, text it to the hotline, which is 1-7-2-0-8-1-9-7-1-2-1. Thank you, folks, and uh, the Jet Bill card... We'll be uh, at the Billings Montana Fair. We cleaned it all up and it looks amazing. Uh, waiting to get the body on it, but uh, everything looks good. Taylor test drove it tonight, and uh, his knees are really high. Uh, that just shows that he's way taller than me. It's actually pretty comfortable. It's gonna hurt. It takes uh, wrong. I ain't got I don't know what we're gonna do about a dash. Yeah. Couple six packs. You out to have fun. Then before you know it, man, your day is done. There's a place in town for that place. Your final lap. Whatever you do, let the cat behind you pass. No more excuses. It's time to go for yours. No more yeah, it's so you should know any kind of stuff. We have our parachute. We have our panel panel. We have a lot of stuff. And we have a go kart that will be there. August 9th through 17th, and it's tomorrow. Yes. That's what we'll be doing. We'll post a lot of pictures to our Facebook page. And we'll go from there. So, do you have anything else to add? I don't think we do. I just want to say thanks to Kurt Iron Man. And, uh, you know, I didn't win for this kind of show. Or anything like that. But, uh, thank you for serving our country and protecting us. Yeah. We all uh, support our troops, firefighters, police officers, you name it, we support them. Unless it's drugs, we'll support that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you name it, and we, uh, what is about it? Hey, anyone, we got, uh, we forgot to mention our sponsors earlier. You have 19 seconds to do it. Episode so here we go. Okay, we got Red, Friends and Signs. We got, uh, 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 Page Jet Racing, Page Jet Anti Racing, Earth Flight Jet Drags Troop. Power their code unlimited and the thunderstruck jet drag. Which is probably drive at Bill Dipper. That's okay. right. Adios. This Goodbye, has been another folks. episode of Jet Racing 365. Dot webs. Dot com. <laughs>